Hello and welcome back to the Chemistry Academy. In this video we're going to look at soaps, detergents and emulsions. So the reason they're all grouped together in the same subtopic is because they all work in a very similar way. Um, so what I've done to start off with is just broken down like the essential information on the structure of all of them um, and then, because I think it's helpful to compare uh, what they all are, and then we'll look at the mechanism of each of them separately. So soaps, what you need to know about them is that they're made by alkaline hydrolysis of a fat or an oil. So when you carry out alkaline hydrolysis, you'll react it with a sodium hydroxide solution. And that hydrolyzes the fat or oil and then neutralizes the fatty acid chains that end up being made and you will therefore get a molecule that looks a bit like this. So the molecule has a hydrophobic hydrocarbon tail, so that's bit, this bit in the red box. So hydrophobic means it doesn't like water, so it won't dissolve in water, it will dissolve in anything that's non-polar or oil-based. And then you've also got the hydrophilic carboxylate head, so that's the head of a soap, it's got a carboxylate group, and that will like water, because hydrophilic means water loving, so that will interact with anything that's polar or water based. The other thing to, uh, you'll need to know about soaps is that they form precipitates with calcium and magnesium ions, which are found in areas of hard water. That precipitate is also known as soap scum, so it's not a good idea to use a soap if you live in an area of hard water where there's a lot of calcium and magnesium ions in it because your soap will cause precipitates to form and it's like a sticky white solid that's really hard to clean off. Detergents are the alternative to soaps in that they don't form precipitates with calcium and magnesium ions so if you do live in an area with hard water then you're better off using detergents. The difference between them, because they both do have hydrophobic hydrocarbon tails, but the detergent has a sulfonate head, so it's a different structure, and that hydrophilic sulfonate head doesn't form precipitates with calcium and magnesium ions, so that's why you don't get the soap scum when you use a detergent. Then the emulsions, they are very similar in structure as well, however they're made by reacting edible oils with glycerol, and what happens when you react the edible oils with the glycerol is you get this like glycerol backbone where you've got hydrophilic hydroxyl groups so they'll be able to interact with polar water and then you also have on one of the fatty acids um, chains the hydrophobic hydrocarbon chain which would interact with anything that's oil based or non-polar so as you can see they've all got hydrophobic parts all got hydrophilic parts it's just what those parts are that are different. So in terms of how they work, it's essentially all the same. So we will have a look at that just now. And also you don't need to know how detergents are formed, so don't worry about that. When it comes to how soaps and also detergents work, we can use the following to explain it. So if we look at the structure of the soap, we've got a hydrophobic hydrocarbon tail and the hydrophilic carboxylate head. So what happens is the hydrophobic hydrocarbon tail dissolves in anything that's non-polar. So normally that will be oil or grease in the context of cleaning. Then the hydrophilic carboxylate head will dissolve in polar water. Um, because remember, like dissolves like. So hydrophobic means it's non-polar, so it would dissolve in anything that's non-polar. Hydrophilic means that it's usually ionic or polar, so it would then dissolve in anything that is also polar. So your hydrophobic hydrocarbon tail dissolves in non-polar oil. The hydrophilic carboxylate head dissolves in polar water. So then when you agitate the mixture, and the agitation is important, so when the mixture is agitated, you get these micelles that form that keep your oil droplets suspended in the water. So it's water all around the outside here and what's happened is the soap molecules basically encapsulate an oil droplet so the tails burrow into the oil, the heads stay outside and interact with the water and you agitate the mixture and you get that micelle formation which then those micelles can be washed away and it takes the oil away with it. 
For detergents, the mechanism is exactly the same. The only difference is that you've got a hydrophilic sulfonate head that dissolves in the water instead of the carboxylate head. So there you get lots of three mark questions on the mechanism of soaps, and this is essentially the key to answering them. Like I said, emulsions are very similar to how soaps and detergents work. However, for soaps and detergents, we're usually using them to clean, but in the case of emulsions, we use emulsifiers, uh, usually in food and drink. So an emulsion is essentially just a mixture of with a non-polar liquid suspended in a polar liquid or vice versa. So you can have a polar liquid suspended in a non-polar liquid or a non-polar liquid suspended in a polar one. An example of an emulsion would be mayonnaise, you also have chocolate, ice cream, so there's lots of important emulsions involved in our everyday life. And in order to make an emulsion, you just use an emulsifier. So generally they are made by reacting edible oils with glycerol, like I've previously mentioned. Um, that's for the ones that are used in food. If you were making an emulsion that was like emulsion paint, you wouldn't necessarily need it to be an edible one. But most of the emulsi emulsifiers we use are edible and they're made by reacting edible oils with glycerol. So they do work in a very similar way to soaps and detergents. They have hydrophilic parts and in the emulsion emulsifiers they are hydroxyl groups that are the polar parts so the hydrophilic hydroxyl groups will interact with the polar liquids and then you've got the hydrophobic hydrocarbon tail or hydrocarbon chain that will interact with a non-polar liquid because the uh, emulsifier, emulsifier has the, both parts the hydrophilic and hydrophobic parts that allows it to keep the non polar and polar liquids from separating so it will hold them together in close proximity. Okay so it does work in essentially the same way it's just the polar the hydrophilic parts and the hydrophobic parts are slightly different in terms of how it's structured. When you are explaining how a molecule can act as an emulsifier you need to make sure you name what part is hydrophilic and what part is hydrophobic so for example the hydrophilic hydroxyl groups and the hydrophobic hydrocarbon tail. So we're just going to finish off with looking at the reaction used to make soaps um, and how to draw them because I often find that people really struggle when they're asked to draw uh, salt and fatty acid and it is very straightforward. <laughs> so here we've got a fat or oil molecule, a triglyceride, and I said before the process of making uh, soap from that is using alkaline hydrolysis where you react it with sodium hydroxide solution. So soaps are just salts of fatty acids so you take the fat or the oil and you hydrolyze it and then neutralize it so it's kind of like a two-step reaction. So if we split the ester links like we had before in the hydrolysis, if you look at the ester video you'll see me doing that in more detail. So we split the ester link and so then we make our glycerol, so that's always produced when you hydrolyze a fat or an oil, even if it's alkaline hydrolysis or regular hydrolysis. So you'll have your glycerols produced and then we have these three different fatty acids. Now if I draw each of these, Okay, so I've got the glycerol that we always produce when we hydrolyze a fat and oil, and then that's the three um, fatty acid parts that we're going to make. So just like when we hydrolyze any ester, this ends up being carboxyl groups again. Okay, so that's what happens in the hydrolysis. But then because you've got the sodium hydroxide there, the sodium ions, what actually happens is the hydrogen ions come off the carboxyl group and they become negative. So remember, acids give hydrogen ions away, 
they have lots of hydrogen ions available so that's why the hydrogen ions come off and then the sodium ions because they are positively charged they are then attracted to the negative oxygen so that's essentially what you end up making so that is what the salt of a fatty acid looks like you just replace the hydrogen with the sodium ion and it is really as straightforward as that so if you are given a molecule and asked to draw the salt that would be formed just take the hydrogen off the carboxyl group and replace it with the sodium the last thing i wanted to show you here is if you get presented with a fatty acid and you react that with sodium hydroxide you're still going to make a soap because you'll still make a salt so like i said before you just take the hydrogen off the carboxyl group and replace it with the sodium ion so that would be what our um, soap head would end up like the rest of the molecule just stays the same but this isn't alkaline hydrolysis anymore that's been used to make this soap molecule this is just a neutralization reaction because you've reacted an acid with an alkali and made a salt and also water in this case okay so if you're making the salt or the soap from the fatty acid and not the whole fat and oil molecule then it's just a neutralization reaction so that's everything you need to know on soaps detergents and emulsions if you found this video helpful please give it a like and don't forget to subscribe to the chemistry academy youtube channel to keep up to date with all of our other tutorial videos and help spread the word thanks guys